All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Mike Latch, who is in Scottsdale, and Greg Murphy, who is in Boise, Idaho. How are you doing, gentlemen? Doing great. Doing well. Yeah, Thank you for having me. Yeah, and uh, and uh, Greg and Mike are the co-authors of their of the book uh, Sales Sucks, and uh, and that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Is first of all, I'm just asking you the question: uh, Sales sucks is the title. Why does sales suck? <laughs> we, we like, that's such a fun thing. It's you know we have have we ask have you ever been manipulated by a salesperson or feel like you know you have to take a shower after. You know, somebody's presenting you their product. Um, we are asking leading questions that if you answer anything opposite to what they want you to say, you sound like an idiot. So we've 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 taken a, a, a different approach to it. That there's a better way through process, uh, through sales enablement tools. That uh, that people we can help people make decisions without manipulation and coercion. And so we do that in kind of a fun, interesting way by telling our story of, you know, of, of, uh, of, of our past experiences, good and bad. Right. Yeah. So and, I, and, uh, sorry, go ahead. Mike. I was going to say, so I, I, um, Greg was my very first sales job, uh, end of 2010, Greg was my sales manager and, and I have a very technical background and I thought sales sucked. Uh, like it was like a bad word, right? Like you go, I'm a little kid going on a, a used car dealer or a car dealership lot with my dad. And he's like immediately in a bad mood when the sales rep comes over. So it, thanks to Greg and like the process that he showed me and made me very effective. Like I went from thinking that sales suck to like, no, no, no. If you do it right, like it's effective, ethical, straightforward to scale. And then later I brought kind of like the technical, you know, and software development and process engineering stuff mm -hmm. that I know. And like, you know, used it to scale up past what just individual sales leaders can do on coaching and stuff like that. Right. So, so when you're, um, so that is the impression a lot of people have, let's face it. I mean, a lot of salespeople became salespeople by default rather by than by choice. Mm -hmm. If you look across all the universities, you've got marketing programs everywhere. You've only got a handful of sales programs. So you've got a lot of people who come out and discover there are more sales jobs than marketing jobs. And, and so when you're, when you, when you're talking to people about like recruiting salespeople and getting salespeople and molding them into good salespeople, um, what are some of the things you can do given the fact that, as I said, a, a lot of the people come into sales by default rather than by choice? Yeah, that's so from a, it, it's the same thing I apply to hiring sales managers, leaders as I do sales representatives is I look for people that are, uh, first of all, coachable, uh, a little bit competitive and humble. And so if you're not, if you're not a little competitive, uh, sales can be pretty rough road road, but if you're a little bit humble, that tells me you'll also be coachable and trainable. And so that's the type of a personality we look for. And that's, it's one of the funny stories is like when Mike first, uh, Sorry, Mike, I'm going to tell a story. Uh, <laughs> first one, <laughs> join the sales team. It's it, it he he one is he's very smart, comes from a, you know, uh, a very scientific background, engineering background. And so he comes across very robotic, kind of cyborg ish. You'll notice what I mean when he talks. Like, <laughs> get it. And so I just thought, you know, I, customers aren't going to jive with him. But it, it, so I, I kind of fired him on his first day. You remember that, Mike? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. And so, but what made, but what makes it so incredible is that Mike immediately, he's, he's, he's he basically contacted me back and say, I'm a smart person. I will do exactly what you asked me to do and just show me what to do, follow the process and, and you, you'll, you'll, you'll watch. And so what, what that taught me there is, is uh, he came in and became the top salesperson uh, uh, in the company in a, a matter of weeks. And then in a matter of months, uh, one of the top salespeople in the nation. And so, uh, and he did that by just his rigor and staying focused on process. And, um, and so it's, it's, it was, it was an incredible success story there. 
Yeah. So just on that note, as you just said there about, uh, you know, being very diligent, uh, uh, following process, you know, doing, I mean, those are those are some of the things that you don't always associate with salespeople, like following processes and stuff. But it is incredibly important. So how much, uh, you know, Mike, when you took this, like how much did process help you to succeed? Um, the process was was. I mean, I don't know how to say if it was 72.3% responsible <laughs> or 90% responsible, but had there not, I was very successful because I literally just did what Greg told me to do. I was very lucky in that the first sales, unlike most successful salespeople that went through all these like hard knocks. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, all I knew was working at, at where Greg was the sales leader. He had like a good training program. And you just follow, you just learn what to say and how to go through and address objections the way that he trained. And that, and like, you just did that and it worked, you know, we mm -hmm. had a product that was like genuinely a good fit for people and it would help for a lot of people. And, and if you did a good job, it helped them figure out if it was a good fit for themselves or not. And I could have cared less whether somebody bought or sold, but mm -hmm. I, I cared about doing a good job of conveying the information, helping people make decisions and listening when they would respond. And then understanding how, what, what category of answer or objection they had. So I knew which subset of information Greg had taught me to then deploy in that instant. And so the owners of that company, you know, it wasn't a giant company that at the time they, they were doing, um, I don't know, 10 to 20 million a year in sales. I think we, or maybe about half that. I think we grew it to like 50 a year or two later. And, um, so not a giant company, but not a tiny company. And the owners are like, how did you get so good so fast? You know, it was like weeks later, I was like their top rep. I'm like, I just did what Greg told me to do, right? <laughs> and so Greg, Greg had recently come on as a sales leader of that company and was trying to get the people from like every, you know, sales reps were kind of all doing their own thing into like having a consistent and better performing way to go through everything. And then he would use me in each new like monthly training where I would come along and by then I was creating software so other reps could, you know, could handle all kinds of stuff. And so he would be like, you know, they would roll me out and be like, Hey, Mike's a clever guy. You're probably clever. Don't overthink this, you know, like just really just follow the process and it, and it'll work. Mm -hmm. So, so model, modeling behavior is obviously uh, important. And, and Greg, given, given your track record as a, as a sales leader, what are some of the fundamentals that are uh, remain so important today and what are some of the, uh, you think, the skills that have maybe evolved a little? Yeah, I would say that we've we've taken the mindset of looking at our, our middle class sales rep. You know, you have your top performers who are just, they, they really, they just need attaboys and attagirls, go get them. And they just crush it because they're super competent and confident human beings. They're probably wired that way. A lot of unconditional love as a kid, maybe, right? And then you have, and then you have the the low performing reps that that, that basically are probably on their way out. But the middle class, that's that that the largest group of typically most sales orgs. Our focus was, if I can generate one to two more sales out of that middle class, it'll have the largest impact um, uh, to the business and to the bottom line. And so that's where we really put our focus. A lot of sales organizations really put them on the top rep and they'll bring the top rep to talk about what they do. And, you know, the middle class reps go, I, I can't do that. I'm not that confident. So we just found that by creating processes that are not manipulative, we say, call it like selling with aloha um, mm -hmm. and training people how to help people make decisions in a real simple way um uh enable folks that maybe had a hard day the the night before maybe they're not feeling so good and 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 mike also helped create this sales enablement software that really took that middle class rep that they didn't have to figure out what they were going to do and say that day they could literally just look at the screen and go oh this is what i talk about this is the decision point does a homeowner would you prefer the high efficiency pro uh, product or standard efficiency product what makes more sense to you Mm -hmm. and just help people make decisions along the way that's what we really found that middle class focusing on them in any business is it, it'll generate a lot of opportunity there mm -hmm. and then on the subject of uh you know managing and coaching right so most people don't know how to coach that's just a given right most people's 
most people's last experience of coaching was probably their high school coach shouting at them from the sideline, just do this, do this. And that's what they think coaching is. So when you ask somebody to coach, sometimes that's pretty much what they do, and especially in sales, they'll say, just do this, do this, do this, and you'll be fine. And uh, so talk to me about the importance of, of a real coaching culture. I have two thoughts on that. One is I want to hit on the younger generation. Uh, my gray hair will probably just let you know where I'm at in that well, hierarchy mine, there. Mine's pretty and, great there. Really better. <laughs> and then the idea of uh, hire fast, fire fast. And so mm -hmm. uh, uh, so what I mean by that is like typically the, the younger generation doesn't, they, they desire authentic relationships. They desire, they want to, they want to change the world. And so old outdated sales tactics that manipulate and coerce people into a corner to just to make a decision they hate it and i'm glad they hate it but what there's is a, what, what what else do i do how else do i uh um go about it and so it's like they're gonna fight you and if they're fighting you as a sales manager um listen it is probably you know everybody's poo-pooing on the engineering i'm going come on it's our job as 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 elders in the industry to mentor and train them right mm -hmm. and so uh so we say and so what i mean by higher fast fire fast is like so often we put so much energy to make people better but if they're not coachable and trainable and if you've got a sales process that's replicable mm -hmm. it's just memorize the process and 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 learn how to follow it and if they don't there's somebody else that would love to have that position so hire around them, replace them and send them on the way because there's more opportunity for them at another company. Yeah, no, I, I was 100% agree with that, um, that you should always like allow people to be successful. And sometimes that means them going somewhere else. Right. Um, the other thing too is uh, we, we, we've traditionally had this focus on you know, you look at the strengths and weaknesses of people, right? And then we just focus 100% in on the weaknesses and we're going to wear uh, and we try to fix all this stuff. And, and oftentimes those are things that are actually not fixable. Or if you fix them, they're never going to do them well. But their strengths, if you actually focus them on their strengths, right? So maybe somebody's a great door opener, right? But they're not very good at the process afterwards. You know, maybe you put them in a door opening um, role. But this this idea of constantly trying to make people good at things that they're not good at, I think a lot of time is wasted on that. We we, uh, we call it follow your favor. So in other words, every person has their ability of how they're naturally wired and they have intuition into what to do next automatically. A lot of times really without coaching. So as a leader, that's your job. You're looking for people that can actually do that well. And our job is just to take the obstacles out of the way so they can go perform because they'll do so much for us. And again, that usually comes from sales leaders that were maybe yelled at by uh, their coaches in high school. <laughs> They're going, oh, they don't even know how to think that way, you know? So it's, yeah. Well, unfortunately, I think we're, we're, we're hard. I mean, it's one of the things you have to, we have to teach ourselves. We're hardwired to find fault everywhere. I mean, for some reason right. as humans, but we have to actually tell ourselves to catch people doing things well <laughs> and remember to go, Oh, that's, you're doing that. That's fantastic. But we spot something immediately. When it's I was going right. to say one of the advantages of what I originally learned from Greg and then deployed at other like larger organizations and larger and large fast growing organizations is that one jumping back a couple of topics of like coachability it's a lot easier to be a good coach when you have like really good sales processes that people can naturally feel good about when they do them well right like look you're not trying to get somebody to buy this no matter what you're trying to like intelligently and efficiently help that purchaser make a decision and so one it's a lot easier to like you know because you're not nobody's experiencing like cognitive dissonance as they're going through doing like pushy tactics or leading tactics, which Greg will probably talk about. So then that makes it harder to coach because you got to get people to feel good about things that they probably shouldn't feel good about. And then, and then to the, um, oh, I lost my train of thought, but, but going through as you, what were we just talking about just before that? Yeah. Are we we just were just talking about it? strengths and weaknesses. Oh, for good fit. So another, another advantage of like having, um, well, the process is in advance where like, hey, the sales team should be performing. We want people saying and explaining this objection in this manner and all that kind of good stuff 
is it's it's a lot easier to figure out if they're a good fit for something or not because because there's such a good standard to compare to and it's really easy to give oh i remember what i was going to say it's really it's much easier to give genuine positive feedback for the sales team when it's so easy to see when they did something according to the standards right so right. not only is it more actionable for even an average middle leader to be like oh they did that part according to the standards good i can tell them that but they'll even they'll do it more often so there's a lot of like virtuous cycles with with kind of what, what with what we're talking about yeah no absolutely as long as you're yeah no it makes complete sense as long as you you know obviously you have to be intentional about these things and i think that's part of it too um let's let's also uh talk a little bit about because everybody is discussing the impact of ai on sales so um from our point of view our, our point of view on this is that uh ai is going to you know take away a lot of the routine rote and you know manual tasks and the non the lower value uh, do a lot of that routine, allowing salespeople to level up a little bit and focus more even on the relationship on the selling side. But how do, how do you see, how do you see the impact of AI on sales? Uh, you want me to go first, Greg? Yeah, go for it. So um, a little over a year ago, uh, I started and Greg's an advisor of the company, another, another uh, tech company called Patter, P-A-T-T-E-R, AI. And we leverage generative AI capabilities in ways that significantly increase. Well, let me just go back up a step. Generally, so one straightforward way to leverage it, like like similar to what you're talking about, is, for example, in strategic sales, which Greg and I know a lot about, like selling something that's like complicated, configurable. You got to sit mm -hmm. down and like, how deep do you want your pool, or do you want two batteries on your residential solar system? You know that kind of stuff. Well, it takes it takes reps longer to get proficient when they have those sorts of products to sell because they have to learn a lot about the product. And so they have to make a lot of mistakes and remember those mistakes before they can execute well in front of a customer the next time. And when you can give feedback like immediately afterwards, which generative AI tools can do that, like, hey, mm -hmm. remember this was the way, this is a good way to explain that product, but you actually said all this stuff and you forgot what to say and it was clearly confusing. You get that feedback to that rep right away. And you do that across like 20 different like categories of explanation or products, something like that. All of a sudden in weeks, you're, you're out there making like solid commissions rather than like six months to 12 months to get to like, you know, mid-level performance in those, for those sorts of more complicated sales. So like it, mm -hmm. it, if done right, it absolutely helps the sales rep, like get, get trained up faster, make more, you know, all, all that kind of good stuff. We see it that it enables, um, I mean, I have a great success story of that just this week, um, uh, uh, enabling it where um, we're able to capture uh, in-home sales, remote, that's remote sales is typically where you, you've had no insight into that business. Mm -hmm. People are out saying whatever they want to say, creating all sorts of issues for the legal team and finance and the operations crew. And so who knows what's being said? And so by, by being able to understand and to learn what's being said in the home uh, and uh, are the concepts that, that are important to the company being delivered, uh, the value propositions, we're able to coach on the spot. Like it'll just pop up the information that you need to deliver to coach to give folks the next thing to work on. It's, it, it, and, and it was really funny. I just trained this guy in these processes just last week and went out on first sales call and coach through the neck one focus on this just those two things that's it not on anything else went out there and he sold it crushed it right and it's like so that's where i think we're going to see the value of making our middle class people better so i'm saying don't be afraid of this thing it's like our job is to actually communicate what we want ai to do and to say into how to think really and that's kind of how we're like a powder ai we're looking at this thing is 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 we want to like how do you sell with aloha well we can train it to do what we want it to do and if people are using manipulative course of weird comments in the house that make people want to shower well like we're gonna know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we can fix it Oh mm -hmm. uh, no! I think I think it's an ex I think it's going to be an exciting time in many ways, as you said, and especially as you you call that middle class of salespeople, because it probably does, it probably will remove some obstacles from them and allow them to get to 
focusing on that more the relationship you know the high value stuff faster than as you said than they would have um in the normal way that's right and yeah john i, I see it as like imagine if you took your best sales leader or your best sales rep and you put them on every single ride along mm -hmm. with every single rep every day no matter what they never get sick that's that's the value that we think it's going to create and i think it's going to just make sales better um uh we want to like less cringe as it were yeah yeah and maybe and 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 hopefully a little bit more enjoyable for yes. for both parties because yes. at the end of the day why shouldn't why shouldn't an interaction between a buyer and a seller be an enjoyable thing john you crushed it <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> Well, listen, uh, guys, this has been fantastic. Uh, all of Mike and Greg's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. Mike, you want to start there first, bud? Um, yeah, sure. Um, I'm a CEO and one of the co-founders of a company called Patter AI. And we we work with like larger strategic sales teams to create um, pretty comprehensive and like um, – game-changing sales enablement applications that the sales reps use when they're sitting with the customer to present configure quote capture you know uh capture information and give feedback without like human intervention if that's what the like client wants and all that kind of good stuff excellent and in and, and from that standpoint like even the book you know my my heart is 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 like i want to change the landscape of sales um it's it's like a legacy and my legacy is i've been blessed to have good mentors and 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 i just want to pass some of that information along and uh and so that's why it's in, in my partnership here with mike uh, in Powder AI, it's 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 really been fun to do that, and 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 you know we we took a company from, you know, uh, in a couple of years from 375 million in sales to over a billion dollars in about two years, and so we like to talk about how did we do that, what were the success stories, and what were the failures, and what, how do we leverage it so quickly, and and that's where we say focus on that 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 uh your middle class folks make them the best they can be and my gosh the loyalty and the joy and the hope that they're going to have in their lives is 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 incredible yeah that's fantastic well listen thanks to uh thanks to both of you today thank you greg thank you mike uh, go check out the book sales sucks uh go check out patter uh patter ai and uh and thanks again for your information. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again very soon. Thank you.